welcome to It's Happening in Grand Prairie. I'm Georgia Clemson, and we have a great show for you today. And we'll start with our first guest, Rodney Nelson, with Lone Star Park. Welcome, Rodney. Thank you, Georgia, for having me on today. Oh, yes. We're so excited about having Lone Star Park in Grand Prairie, Texas. It's uh, wonderful. And uh, we know that you're just wrapped, wrapped up the season with the Stars and Stripes. That's always such a great fireworks show. I hope that went well. That's right. Um, you know, Lone Stars and Stripes is one of my favorite days out there at the racetrack. Um, it's great to be good friends with the city of Grand Prairie and have the support. We just wrapped up our spring thoroughbred season. It started at the beginning of April and ran through July 4th this year. Um, lots of good race days out there. The thoroughbreds were out there, some great stakes races. Memorial Day is one of our very big cards out there. Uh, highlighted by the grade three Steve Sexton Mile. Um, some other stakes races on the undercard that day as well. So that was a good one. Um, we've had great crowds out there this year. So thanks to everyone that's come out to support the horse racing in Grand Prairie. And it's such a beautiful place. Even if they're not interested so much in the gambling aspect, even if they just want to come out and watch the horses and see the beauty of that track, it is so inviting. That's right, and if you've ever been to another racetrack and then compared it to Lone Star Park right here in Grand Prairie, you can see the difference in these racetracks. Lone Star Park has beautiful facilities, and we're glad to show them off to everyone that comes out. Like you said, whether you like the gambling aspect or not, still you can get out there and just for a few bucks to get in the gates, you can be within two feet of the star athletes. It's, it's really amazing experience to come out to the horse track. It's very beautiful. Now, uh, with the hot weather, I know you've, we've experienced a lot of that. There are options, aren't there, other than sitting outside, and of course outside is a lot of shade as well, but what are the other options at the racetrack? Yeah, it's glad that you brought up the other options. It has been so warm this summer. We have a magnificent grandstand at seven levels. Um, from the first level, you know, General Mission can get in and enjoy the nice air conditioning that we have on the ground level, get up close to the horses. And then as you move up, there's different seating options. Our second floor is reserved seating, so you can get you a box of four or six and sit there in the air conditioned second floor. Or you can move up to our Silks dining room on floor number four, which um, I've been told is one of the largest dining rooms in Texas, can seat about 1,400 people in there at a single time. Um, nice buffet up there. Of course, you're right in front of the, the big window, so you can look out and have the best view of the racetrack. And then we have a couple levels of luxury suites as well that can be rented on a, on a race day, and, and they're pretty exciting. Yes, and, and you have some food options out there too, don't you? That's right, the Silks has a great buffet. Um, same thing with the suites level, you'll get buffet on those as well. Lots of concessions everywhere else around the building. Um, some of our um, biggest, most well-attended days are our dollar days that we have out there. So if you're not looking for the high-class buffet that we have, you can get out there on those select days, grab you a hot dog for a dollar, a beer for a dollar, popcorn, so on and so forth. We just wrapped one of those up and um, it was a very well-attended day. Oh, I bet it was. And let's see. Uh Throughout the summer, what's happening at Lone Star Park? I know that's a quieter time for you. It is a little bit quieter time after we end the season, but we, what we do is we're fortunate enough to have a lot of square footage inside the building, a lot of square footage in the parking lots as well. So there are groups that come out there and rent out certain areas of the property and um, you know have festivals, car shows. Uh, corporate events, meetings, um, so there's always something going on out there at the racetrack. And some people have their 5K runs. Do they start them out there? or? That's right, they will have 5K runs. I'm not a runner, so I, I'll I'm put those either. out of mind. <laughs> but yes, 5Ks, 10Ks, they'll start at the racetrack, they'll hit some of the trails down around the uh, river and uh, wind up back at the racetrack, have, you know, uh, metal ceremonies and, yes. and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun for those people, they get into it. Me. They usually start early in the morning. I'm still in bed at that time. Yes, I understand. Now, also, when they get back, if they wanted to go in and eat at the Bar and Book, or tell me about that facility. That's right. Bar and Book is our um, world-class simulcast facility, which is located just to the west of the big grandstand. You can go in there seven days a week. You can bet races from all over the United States and even some from overseas as well. Good kitchen in there. Um, it's, uh, it's Bar and Book is a great place to stop in, grab something to eat, whether 
if you're looking for a spot in North Grand Prairie for lunch or you want to stop by after work or on a day off, we'd love to have you over there. Maybe win a couple bucks playing some horses and um, have a good meal as well. That's really exciting that you do things year round. That's right. Now in the fall, something really special happens. Tell yes. us about that. I'm really excited about our fall season. So we get underway uh, just after Labor Day and we'll run all the way up through Thanksgiving. Um, Friday and Saturday nights for the quarter horse meet. That's the fall meeting of champions. And one of the reasons we call it the fall meeting of champions is the year, a lot of the year end awards for the quarter horses are decided at Lone Star Park through horses at race. Well, we're fortunate enough this year that toward the end of October, we're going to be the host of the Bank of America Challenge Championship. So it, what that consists of is regional races all over the hemisphere, uh, even coming from South America, Canada. Um, horses will win qualifying races and they'll earn a spot in the championship races, which will be held at Lone Star Park this year. That is so exciting, Rodney. Uh, it's nice for our viewers to find out more if they have not visited it's a great place to go, a great place to enjoy the beauty of the area. And um, we're excited about the uh, future events and looking forward to the fall when we have the thoroughbreds. Uh, quarter horses in the fall. Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> quarter horses in the fall, cooler weather as well. Um, the fall is, is, is gonna be a great time. It's one of my favorite times out there. If you don't know the difference between quarter horses and thoroughbreds. There you go. <laughs> uh, I, like to, I like to explain it as in terms of auto racing, right? So yes. uh, your thoroughbreds are, you can compare those to NASCAR. They're going all the way around the track where your quarter horses, they're your drag racers. They're going to run straight and fast. Straight and fast. I love that too. And thank you for correcting me on that. I know that the spring is when we wear the big hats and come out right. for the for the big races. So uh, thank you again for joining us and sharing all this great information about Lone Star Park with us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. And we'll be right back. Grand Prairie, it's time to bag the bag and grab the bin. The city is no longer collecting recycled items in plastic bags because plastic bags damage processing equipment. Instead, use your recycling bin to hold items for pickup. And remember, only glass bottles and jars, metal cans, and paper products are okay. For more information, please visit gptx.org slash recycling. Welcome back. And welcome to our next guest, Mr. Zane King. Welcome, Zane. Thank you, Ms. Georgia. Happy to be here. Yes, and tell our viewers what your title is with the City of Grand Prairie. I am the creative producer for Epic Central, so my job is to make sure that the music plays, that the lights flash, and that everything, everybody has a great experience whenever they come out to Epic Central. And what a fun job that is. That is so exciting and we're so glad to have you back here in the studio to tell our viewers what's happening at Ep Epic Central. Well, we are we are fully open for business. We have two our we actually we have three of our restaurants, Chicken and Pickle, Loop 9 and the Finch are now open. Uh, Vidora is going to be coming on very soon. We hope right around the 1st of August and then Serious Eats is coming in September. We have a new brunch concept coming in December, and we have another restaurant that we are actively uh, bringing in restaurant tours. Uh, and so, there is go even though Epic Central is open, there's a whole lot coming. Our hotels we expect to be open around uh, November or December, and uh, we have lots more exciting uh, things to announce as they become available. Oh yes, what an exciting year for Grand Prairie and Epic Central. It really has been, and, and it really culminated with the launch of the Alluvia Fountains. Yes. Um, you were out there that night with the mayor along with some of the other council members, and we were able to premiere this to the public uh, and to the city leadership. And then this past weekend, it ran its full set of shows. We had a great time. It's running every single night. Uh, we uh, The fountains start at 11 a.m. to uh, to 1.30, so you can come out for lunch, 
see the fountains dance. Uh, they're not really doing a show because of the light. <laughs> right. But you can still see it. It's really beautiful. And then starting at 5 o'clock, the uh, dancing water starts back up. And then we have uh, some early shows at 7.30 and 8.30 that are just music and lights. Uh, then at 9.30 and 10.30, the projection shows start, and uh, that's what really is makes it unique and makes it a one of a kind, only in North or one of the only one of its kind in North America, right here in Grand Prairie. And I'm so glad you uh, told us the times because I think I've been telling different stories like 8.30, 9.30, and 10.30, so we don't want to confuse well, that. And we do still have the 8.30, 9.30, and 10.30. Oh, we you just do. added the 7.30 show. And oh. so 7.30 and 8.30 are just dancing water, then 9.30 and 10.30 are the projection. Okay, so if they want the full, big, fabulous, Vegas-style show, they come at 9.30. 9.30 and 10.30. And you can always see the schedule at epiccentral.com and just click on Alluvia. That's the name of the fountain show. Oh, that's perfect. Now, about how long does each show last? Each show's approximately 12 to 15 minutes. Um, it is free. Uh, the only thing that would stop it is severe weather or really, really high winds because uh, that fountain shoots 60 feet up in the air, projects onto a screen of water. So if the wind's real bad, we have to uh, suspend it. But luckily, uh, so far, so good. Yes, and Zane, everybody is talking about the Alluvia Water Show, except they call it the Las Vegas style, Bellagio style <laughs> water yes. show at Epic Central or in Grand Prairie. Yes. Now, Grand Prairie is on the map for something new, mm -hmm. and that's exciting. And I'm telling you, people, one of my eye doctors at, at, in Arlington and whatever, they already knew about it. Mm -hmm. So they were. Uh, pretty impressed with that and I believe it'll bring people from all over the Metroplex and probably all over Texas. It really is and it's a testament to the leadership of the city, the city council, the mayor and city staff that, and even our former leaders, uh, Tom Hart, yes. who had this vision of creating something special for the citizens of Grand Prairie that is free that is family friendly, that you can be proud of. And to see it all come to culmination and to see uh, not only the entertainment that it gives, but the economic activity it gives. That's the real, that's the real genius behind this. And I commend you and the city council and the leadership for having that vision. I'm so thankful for that vision. And you mentioned Tom Hart. Appreciate him for thinking of that as well. And, um, you know, when they get out there, do they? There's a place that they can sit, stand, or should they bring a lawn chair? They what can bring suggest? a lawn chair. They can bring a lawn chair. We're asking no umbrellas be brought out, uh, but we also understand it's Texas, so if you need shade, you go on ahead and bring it, even though it says not to on the website because we want mm -hmm. you to stay cool. But we can also schedule. You can also reserve a space on one of the patios at Loop Nine or Finch, and then whenever Vidora opens, and so we want people to come out dine in the restaurants, get a seat on the patio, watch a show, have a great time, and then go tell your friends to come see it at Grand Prairie. Now that sounds like a great idea. Now if they're out there during this heat, is there a place they can buy water or buy refreshments? Yes, ma'am. So uh, one of the unique things about Epic Central is that you can buy food and drinks um, anywhere on site and walk it around anywhere. So all of our restaurants have uh, grab-and-goes. They have little uh, appetizers. And then you can also get drinks or water to go. Um, we are allowing right now for people to bring a small cooler with just some water or some snacks for their kids. And so we want to make sure that everybody is comfortable. But we do have refreshments available on site. We do have some shaded areas, but uh, once again, we want to make sure that everybody stays safe. And so uh, go into the restaurants and take a cool down if you need to. Use the restrooms there as well. That is excellent. Um, I know that uh, you're working very hard on making this just perfect for our citizens. And the fact that it's free, that's so exciting uh, to all of us that everybody can come enjoy this. Absolutely. Epic Central is for everyone. And I, if, they, if people don't hear anything else, I want them to hear that Epic Central is for everyone. And so uh, you can come out and have a great meal. You Or you can come out and take a beautiful stroll around the lake and have a great time with your family and it won't cost you a dime. But the most important thing is that you come see Epic Central. Absolutely. I know when I first came on the council, I said, you know, we need something in Grand Prairie 
like you go to Ireland and kiss the Blarney Stone. <laughs> we need to have something in Grand Prairie that will draw them in. And they say, oh, yes, let's go to Grand Prairie for... And Epic Central is one of the things that they will be able to say now. It absolutely will be. And, and our hope is that we will continue to make it uh, even bigger and better and even more epic as the years go by. Yes. And just one more uh, uh, visit with the food that's available. Yes, ma'am. The Loop 9 barbecue. So they have the option of barbecue. They have option barbecue. Uh, the Finch, which is high-end uh, seafood, a grill and raw bar, but they also have amazing hamburgers and uh, prime rib, and they do serve brunch on Sundays. And then chicken and pickle, which is also serving brunch on Sundays. And uh, hopefully everyone's been to chicken and pickle so far, but if you haven't, go check oh. it out. It's good. Yes, it is. And what can we expect from Vidora? What kind of menu? Vidora is going to be traditional Tex-Mex. Uh, it is going to be uh, uh, regional flavors and all handmade from a scratch kitchen. And then the Sirius Eats Food Hall, which will have serious pizza, serious sliders, and serious shakes. Very serious food. That's Absolutely. exciting. <laughs> That's so exciting, Zane. Thank you so much for bringing all this information to us. It's been a pleasure seeing you again, and uh, we know that you and your beautiful wife, Amber, put lots of thought and prayer into what goes on out there. So thank you so much for being here, and uh, God bless you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you. And we'll be right back. The City of Grand Prairie offers Alert GP, a high-speed communication service for emergency notifications. Receive alerts from the Grand Prairie Emergency Management Team by going to the City's website and following the sign-up instructions. Alert GP can notify a lot of people in a short time. It targets the entire city or specific areas where critical community alerts are necessary. If we can't reach you, we can't alert you. Visit gptx.org slash alertgp and sign up today. Welcome back, and welcome to our next guest, who's one of our favorite guests, pretty Miss Amy Sprinkles. <laughs> welcome, Amy. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. <laughs> and Amy, you always come wearing a different hat or wearing several hats. Yes. Now we're coming to celebrate you and your 30 years with the city of Grand Prairie. Yes, I am retiring, <laughs> so leaving the hats <laughs> with others. Leaving the hats in the hat box yes. for others. Yes. But you know what? Um, what a career you've had with the city of Grand Prairie. Tell us about, just kind of lead us on a little journey where you started. It was, uh, yes, it has been quite the journey. Um, so I got here in 1992, came from the city of Phoenix, where I was the press secretary for the council and the marketing officer mm -hmm. for the city of Phoenix. And I had worked for an agency in First Interstate Bank mm -hmm. before that, which is now Wells Fargo. I um, had my undergraduate and master's degree from Arizona State University, but I grew up in Texas and I wanted to come home. Yes. And this job brought me home. Um, when I got here, Grand Prairie was population 80,000. Um, we had maybe 400 employees, most of whom were fire and police. We, lit, we existed in the original City Hall that's now City Hall West yes. before we grew so big. Um, and I, my office was a cleaned out closet in Public Works. And my desk was a hand-me-down from the Naval Air Station after it had closed. And I couldn't open the drawers because they were stuck with something. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> So what a beginning. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know what? I was so excited to be here. I was a person of a department of one for several years before we started to grow that. And just just excited about working with the, you know, this city has such potential. And um, being able to communicate with employees and residents. If you, you know, don't sell, tell. If you, uh, people want to know, so show them let them in on the what's happening and people are just so much more assured and confident and pride builds when they are part of knowing what's happening in their local government. Yes. Um, so that's kind of the premise that we, we started with wanting to help um, Grand Prairie grow up and w as, as we knew we were going to, ideally located 
were going to grow. Yes. And just working with the mayor and the council and the city management team on um, cultivating that direction and those key messages and target audiences, it's been a blast. Um, yes. So started there. We were, you know, you think back 30 years ago, we didn't have a website. No. Social media didn't exist. Cell phones didn't exist. You picked up the phone. You picked up the faxes. Yeah. We had fax machines. Yes. We had computers, but nobody had the same software. So we weren't compatible right. at all. Um, we, you know, we grew up. We grew the department. We started this television station. Um, we uh, first website. Um, first, we started with MySpace. Back in the day, we had a police MySpace page mm -hmm. to help recruit police officers. And then we graduated into the early, early, I created an avatar on Facebook so we could have a city Facebook pages before you could have city Facebook pages. Yes. <laughs> and you know, now we use all the tools it is in the amazing. arsenal. It's amazing. Yeah. And you've, you mentioned your mayors and city uh, staff and mm -hmm. uh, city councils, so you've worked with various mayors and city managers? I have had the honor and privilege to be able to work with, well, of course, you know, in my lifetime, our two greatest mayors, Mayor yes. England and Mayor Jensen. And yes. I know fabulous mayors came before, but that's my frame of reference. So, so Mayor England was elected in a, um, the week I got here. Yes, that is very interesting. So I worked with him for 20 plus years and now Mayor Jensen for Ten. Ten plus. Well, yeah. his uh, yeah. service and as a council, council person council before that. As well. um, and then uh, Tom Hart for 20 plus years. Yes. Who was the uh, genius behind so much of what we do now. Absolutely. Um, he created the whole raving fans culture that I think our citizens enjoy. And our department runs that program, Creating Raving Fans by work, uh, Delivering World Class Service. We run that recognition program for our employees. Um, our current city manager, Steve Dye, embraces that and we continue that tradition of creating that excellence in customer service under his leadership. Um, and so I've just been honored. We had a city council when your mom served that, that almost never changed. Very little change. So right. a lot of continuity. Mm -hmm. um, which always is a blessing and like like monk used to say it's a blessing and a curse right right it's, it's a, a blessing but then there's inevitably then change will occur because you've had so much time of continuity it's just that the pendulum swings and so we're blessed to have such great council members that um, love the city and are helping to help us um, as uh, zane said it I don't know if he said it earlier, but he told me in the lobby, Grand Prairie is glowing up. Oh, growing I Growing like up and glowing up because we are just hitting it on all pistons and yes. lights and water and fountains and Everything. fabulous things. Yeah. Yes, epic things. Yeah, epic things. Yes, um, Amy, and um, we celebrated you, the city celebrated you with a retirement party recently. And you had such a wonderful turnout at Chicken and Pickle, we which did. was appropriate. I know. <laughs> and did you enjoy that, your I did. family? I did. My um, sister was here. My parents are not able to travel anymore. They're 90 and 92, live in Phoenix. And, but my sister came in town and then my daughters and their husbands and my grandkids who were the little wild children running they about. Were the entertainment. <laughs> they were. They were fun. They yes. were. They are a handful, but love them all. Looking forward to spending more time with them. Yes. Now, Amy, tell us your plans now that you have officially retired, but you're still going to, we'll still see you around, won't we? I am. Um, yes. So I'm in town. I live in town. Don't plan to move. Um, we're going to play pickleball. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And then I'm also volunteering for Lifeline um, for families. In, in fact, our executive director, Melinda, is coming in this afternoon to tell me what my to-dos are. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I love it. And... Um, I think I'll probably volunteer at the libraries. I like putting books in order. Don't love shelving books, but I love putting books in order. In order, right? yes. And help the friends. Um, and I may look at some special projects for the city. Yes. In a couple of months, we'll, uh, I'm going to ease into retirement and might dabble back into um, some part-time 
opportunities in, in the fall, yes. Yes, well, what a difference you have made in the city of Grand Prairie. Um, your expertise and skills, I think, are just remarkable, and you've used them so well to bless our city uh, in, a, in a great way. Thank you. It's been, we've grown up together. Um, it's been a great fun, and I think our work has made a huge difference, and will continue to do so. Oh, it has. And as you mentioned, uh, you not only worked with the city, and of course you've been fabulous uh, to raise a family and grandkids, and you donate your time to some very, very important organizations mm -hmm. that are making a difference in the lives of many. Yes, so it's really important to give back. It really is, yeah. and um, there aren't enough words to say how much we appreciate you and uh, wish you the very best. And I know we are going to spend more time on the pickleball yes, court yeah. and uh, some other places that are going to be fun as yes. well. And yes. I'm glad you have the opportunity to select some of those things that really inspire you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know I leave our uh, city in capable hands and brilliant minds, um, and they'll, my team will do a great job. And I'm just a phone call away if they have a, hey, where did we put the staplers? <laughs> <laughs> the important things yeah. in life. And I know your staff is fabulous, and we're, we all know that it'll take at least, nobody will ever replace you. I'll always say that about my mom. No yeah. one will ever replace you. But we can follow in your footsteps, and uh, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank All you. It's right. been my pleasure. A blessing. All right, darling, and God bless you in your future chapters. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. Just a reminder, I'm Georgia Clemson, and reminding you that it is happening in Grand Prairie.